So I'm curious to know on the driver side, what's the sort of biggest change um, to the product uh, that you've had to make kind of in response to the pandemic? Well, I think that the decision to shut down shared rides was probably the earliest big decision from a product perspective mm -hmm. that we made. Um, and this was something that we heard from drivers very early on in the crisis that, hey, yeah. you know what? I'm okay doing a trip with another in, one individual in the car. What I'm not comfortable with is four people packed into my car. And yeah. so we, we made that decision and essentially within a matter of three or four days of, of the initial pool shutdown, we shut down pool all over the world. Um, so that, that was a pretty big change. And honestly, that was a change that we didn't take lightly on the rider side, because as you might expect, the most price sensitive riders are the ones who choose pool. Um, it's the cheapest option. Okay. And believe it or not, uh, pool actually declined slower than uh, all our other mm -hmm. products. So as the crisis started to hit, you started to see trips really drop off. Shared rides dropped the slowest. And I think Interesting. part of that is the unfortunate reality that a lot of the people who weren't able to actually work from home um, yeah. were a bit more cost conscious. And so we're choosing pool. And, and so we actually wrestled with the, the decision on the, on the rider side because we said, look, people are choosing this option because they need an option mm -hmm. that's safe. They're probably choosing it because they don't want to get on a crowded bus right now. And so right. we, we, we did feel a little bit of tension there, but ultimately made the decision to shut it down. That was probably the biggest one. And then I think since then, the moves you've seen us make on on the safety side of things, such as you know mandating masks, for example, that's a pretty fundamental mm -hmm. change. And I think yeah. three weeks ago, four weeks ago, when we first started discussing it, was seemed like a pretty crazy idea to some people because yeah. masks are not widely accepted in every market, right. certainly not even in the U.S. in in every state, you know. And it's turning into a bit of a political issue and all this other stuff. So right. we, we wrestled with some of those, but those are probably the biggest ones. Okay. Yeah, no, that, that's interesting for sure. And uh, I mean, I think from the driver's perspective, I know that drivers are, you know, not always the biggest fan of pool rides and especially during, you know, the times of COVID because you're sort of potentially, you know, exposing yourself to more people. Um, so it's interesting to hear that converse side. And I, I think it makes a lot of sense too that perspective. Um, you know, I've done many pool rides myself and yep. can kind of, uh, you know, can confirm that. It does seem like, I, I guess for me, sometimes I feel like not, I wouldn't say that I had a crystal ball, but I feel like a lot during this pandemic, I was hearing from a lot of drivers about things like, hey, I'm not doing airport trips anymore, yeah. or, you know, hey, I don't want to do shared rides anymore. And then one, two or three weeks later, I would see Uber come out with the policy. And obviously, you know, I'm kind of hearing anecdotes here and there. So I wouldn't expect Uber to be able to shift on a dime. Um, but I am curious about that feedback loop between Uber and its drivers, because they really are the ones on the front lines. And, you know, I think that example of the fact that, you know, maybe there were some potential discrimination issues at the beginning and now kind of looking back like you know in some ways right like you know forget for example like not doing the airport trips might have been a smart move on some drivers uh, behalf right so i'm curious how that feedback loop worked between uh, uber and drivers and you know how it could get better too in the future yeah so we are i would say um we are always looking to the feedback we're getting from drivers from all our customers but but from drivers mm -hmm. in particular for how we should um, evolve the platform, what product changes we should make. And, you know, there are sometimes tensions we have to work out between what is what a rider would like and what a driver would like. You know, obviously, if we yeah. just let's say we made the decision early on to just turn off the service at airports, I think we, we mm -hmm. would definitely face a lot of criticism right. from people who are still traveling or people who have no choice to travel. So again, it's, it's always about trying to um, balance do, the two sides balance the two sides and um you know perhaps there's ways you can align economic interests better right maybe we don't turn mm. off off airport trips but you you pay extra for them or something like that so yeah. the drivers who choose to do that are being rewarded so we try to get creative in, in figuring out solutions that yeah. balance both well, sides i guess i'm curious to know like for example in this situation like how specifically you know were you getting feedback from drivers because i imagine you know most drivers you know like they're venting to me and um you know i imagine if they go to customer service right like that's really the main you know and kind of like you know i know that from time to time uber is doing focus groups on new products or services and getting feedback that way but when you sort of need quick feedback from uh you know a, a group of constituents that you don't normally get quick feedback from right like their point of contact is really kind of like customer 
customer service. And I can't imagine, you know, customer service is, you know, the best at relaying like the issues drivers are facing, you know, on a daily basis with like regards to PPE and, you know, where they, sh who they should pick up or who they shouldn't pick up and well, all of those issues to kind of inform. You'd be surprised. Or is that the best channel? <laughs> yeah, you, you'd be surprised because we, we get, we essentially do daily reporting of, uh, okay. Uh, customer support uh, feedback by category or issue type, right? And then those right. insights are surfaced very actively by our community operations team, which is our customer support team. Okay. Um, and they're surfaced to the product team, to the ops team, and then we adjust on the fly. So I'll give you an example. Um, with the policy we've just rolled out, um, we are uh, tracking two things. One is how often do we hear that somebody had a mask on and they did the the selfie and it actually was a, mm -hmm. a false, uh, you know, it, it gave a false reading. So if we're getting a lot of support tickets from drivers saying, look, I had a face covering on and it didn't work. That's a good way for us to know, Hey, actually something's broken yeah. here. We need to fix it. And then we try to rev on that really quickly. Or how often are we seeing disagreements between riders and drivers? Because, you know, one is wearing a mask and one is not. And, right. you know, at peak, you might get thousands of those a day. Uh, for us mm -hmm. at our scale. And then we, we would take that information again, serviced by our team and within, you know, try to turn around evolution to the product changes to the policies yeah. or even just communication. You know, sometimes it's just about educating riders or drivers right. about what the policy is. So customer supports actually a really great channel, um, you know, mm -hmm. in our area and, and you and I exchanged some messages on this, but you know, our, our first version of the financial assistance policy for drivers while, I think well intentioned definitely had a lot of uh, bugs in, in its implementation and drivers were yeah. finding it, you know, onerous to go through the process, uh, found the documentation requirements somewhat onerous and, and, you know, while, while, uh, so we launched a V2 of that and, and much of that was based on the feedback we were hearing from drivers about the original process. And I think it's, it's been yeah. better, frankly, in, in the V2 and that's always our goal is to try to turn around you know, uh, changes really quickly based on the feedback we're getting.